Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so excited today to be joined by the wonderful Rose Matafeo, who's the creator, co-writer, and star of Starstruck. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the writing process and particularly in regards to the dialogue in this show, because you use dialogue as a tool to tell us so much about character. And there's a real density to the dialogue because of the rhythm and the pacing. So it really informs that as well. So I was really interested in in how you approach that when you're working on the scripts and really kind of combing through every line and and finding those ways where the tiniest inflection can tell us so much about character or really move the story forward. Yeah, I um, I think dialogue for me is the most important thing about writing in a way. I mean, I know there, there are other things you gotta you gotta worry about, but but for me, I think the things that I love, the films that I love, the television I love, is so hyper specific. I think I think coming from comedy as well, like doing stand up, where I think the the specificity of of a joke, you know, if you get it in the wrong order, you've got you you've worded it wrong, it just stops being funny, and I think. That's what I think a lot of comedians can bring to, you know, narrative script, uh, you know, scripted stuff is that uh, specificity. And um, and uh, I work with, you know, I write with Alice Sneddon and Nick Sampson, who are both, um, you know, do stand up comedy as well. And um, I I feel like sometimes they are uh, get annoyed at me when I'm sometimes coming through dialogue and I'm like, oh, let's change this tiny thing, like you know, or like change one word and something. And and um, but in terms of dialogue being the thing that kind of uh, lets story and character unfold naturally and organically, I think is such a um, a thing I love in, in watching things when you're not being told uh, stuff that, or, or characters aren't, you don't feel like characters are the mouthpiece for a writer going, oh, no, I need this bit of exposition now. And, oh, you know, like, oh, I need to get the story from here to here. I think taking care and um, making it feel real is, um, is something I, I, I appreciate in other work and hopefully we do in ours. One of the things I also love about the comedy of this show that doesn't happen very often is that the other characters acknowledge it. So often when you're watching movies and TV, none of the other characters are laughing at that. And mm -hmm. particularly for Jesse, you, you know, you have so many moments where it's like Tom responds with laughter and really acknowledges the humor that she has because you've also written the two characters with this balance where she's, you know, undeniably the funnier one. And, and that's kind of part of the dynamic as well. <laughs> um, and is that something that you're throwing into the scripting process? And when did you realize that that was an important important facet of the humor of the show. Well, yeah, it was a very strange, I mean, if you go and control F, um, Tom laughs in our scripts, it happens a lot. But honestly, it's it's not to say that Nikesh uh, Patel, who plays Tom, isn't someone who would, you know, naturally do that, you know, with, with, with the scripts as they are. But sometimes you have to write it in because it's so rare for a male character, particularly in a romantic, um, you know, uh, like story um, to be that giving. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're like taking out the parade. <laughs> I can hear it a little bit now. <laughs> I know, yeah. I was like, God damn it, that's all right. No, honestly, are you sure that it's not a problem? I think it's fine. It's I can hear the music, but it's very soft. Let's contextualize it. Look, yeah. there's a parade going on. Let's move on. It's absolutely fine. But um, yes, uh, I think I think when we write that in the script, it's sort of. It, it's 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 creating tone as well like and so when we come to uh you know make it we know i guess sort of the intention of that dialogue or the, the, the vibe that we want that scene to have and on honestly a lot of credit goes to you know karen main who directed um the first series and then jamie J. johnson who did the second series because those are directors who like get a script like that and understand that it has to you can't just you know knock out the script as it is like i'm actually really well, you know, uh, and, and and the other writers as well. Um, I write such minimal, like big print, like you know, action and stuff, um, and very simple, you know, uh, uh, sort of instructions, you know, to actors or directors or heads of department. Because I noticed in a lot of rom com scripts that I really liked that it was really sparse. You know, you didn't have a character walking in and being like she's gorgeous, wearing a scarf and a hat tilted at a jaunty angle. You're like, no, 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 like. Like, those are those are superfluous <laughs> to, the, to the story, and also makes the script longer, and um, and it's an, and I don't want the script to look long, or else people get scared, and uh, tell me to cut lines. So it's 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 you know a two way thing. 
but also you know without looking at the scripts but looking specifically at the show when there are so many kind of small actions that again just go back to telling us so much about character and i feel like especially with the supporting cast when they're coming in you've got such a finite amount of time with them on screen to tell us so much about them and you know in season two the director that's working with tom when tom walks into a lunch meeting and the other guy's already ordered lunch and is already eating that's a small action that that tells us a lot as well um and so have you found that it's really helped in terms of fleshing out supporting characters as well in the show 100 i mean well well one of the best things you can do uh to, to achieve that is cast like incredible people who do a lot of the work for you like russell Covey is an example of someone who you know we, we wrote that character but a lot of uh you know as a, a total dick basically <laughs> directed and he took that and he just like went with it so hard he made so many offers and i think when there is there is you know maybe i'm a lazy writer in the sense that i don't overwrite character descriptions or or as as i'm not as prescriptive of the, those things because i think i find myself working with people who bring their own talents to it their own ideas to it and then it's sort of a collaboration when we're on set and um or in rehearsals or you know uh to to see what they can bring to it um and especially in comedy because i think it's you should, you've got to write towards what's funny in, in actors, you know? And I think we do that with all of the supporting cast and it's 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 more about um, bringing out what is the best in those people. Like, you know, it couldn't just be anyone. It, it's, we've cast that person and it happens with, you know, Emma City who plays Kate and, and you know, Joe Barnes who plays Joe. I'm very imaginative with character names. But, um, but yeah, I think it's a really nice and hopefully a nice thing for an actor to come to a script and feel like they can make their mark on it as well. Also, there's not much room for improv in a script like this as well. So it's it's actually a way of like, you know, taking what we've got because it's so tightly packed that the episodes and um, kind of, you know, it's a, it's a form of improv, I guess, you know, <laughs> putting your own twist on the characters, but yeah. The show also is so great in the way that it's both a love letter to romantic comedies, but also subverts the genre in terms of just going down to the granular human level of like, okay, well, what would this experience actually be like? You know, mm -hmm. the two of them running away on the bus. Okay, well now we're opening the second season with like, what happens after? Like, oh, I thought I was moving to New Zealand and I was moving home, so I don't even have a key to get back into my yeah, house yeah, yeah. and all of those things or making a romantic gesture, but actually what is the reality of wading into a lake? It's pretty gross and she's a mm -hmm. little bit drunk and doesn't necessarily have the right words to say. Um, <laughs> do you, when you're, when you're creating those sorts of moments in the show, are you thinking specifically about you know the rom-com genre and the idea of kind of distilling it down or is it really just about the scenes and the characters driving those moments forward and then that happens to kind of parlay into the romantic comedy elements i think it is honestly like we never go i, I don't think we ever go into it going okay this is a trope and then we're, we're trying to subvert it there and because i think that's never it feels like a natural way to to write a story i think what's fun is i think you've got two different uh start like we've got a style in which we always follow what's the natural progression of a story that feels true to these characters that we've created. But then also that exists within the confines or the boundaries of what the genre is, which is rom-com. So I think it's it's kind of a fun thing. It's kind of a fun challenge of going, okay, this is the setup. This is, this is the relationship. This is what's happened. What is the, what's true to these characters that that would naturally happen in this scenario? So, you know, it's like, okay, the, the big romantic, gesture at the end of series one and then all we did was kind of follow of going okay hang on what would what would we do what would you do you know if you actually did that let's be realistic about it rather than going i guess going oh we want to get from a to b it's kind of uh it feels like more of a um i don't know it's like a it, it's, it's like devising something as you go like as opposed to having something you want to say. I always, I always find that. I think even in like, when I would write stand up shows, I never knew what the show was about until I'd done it for a month and I, I and I'd see what kind of material I'd written. And then you feel like you, you pick out what the subconscious theme is going on. And then you go, Oh, the show's about that. Instead of going into something going, this is my intention. This is what I want to say. And how am I going to say it? Um, which is, you know, it's probably the right way around <laughs> for writers. But I think for this, it's um, uh, I think it's more about what feels real 
to characters and um and how I'd react to you know uh, how I, what I'd do if I you know didn't get off didn't get on plane for someone which is have a panic attack for for for, a, for about two and a half months you know also in terms of, of talking about character and talking about Jessie because she's a character that is so confident on the surface people often don't look at those sorts of people and think about the insecurities underneath and yet you find all these ways to kind of show the different expressions and how that comes out you know so for her getting into an argument with Tom when he's like oh your shirt looks really kooky that clearly mm -hmm. kind of like taps into something for her the argument's about 10 other things it's not really about the shirt yeah. but that comment really kind of distills something that she feels about herself or thinks about herself and so what are the different ways in which you find those, those kind of fallibilities and insecurities underneath the surface and what her specific expression as a character is of them yeah well i mean i think also i'm so sorry about the parade again it's so loud hey, Patrick's it's day. Right we can't do anything. <laughs> um in terms of her insecurity i don't know i think um i think i just this is just so, so ridiculous. It's so bizarrely distracting. <laughs> Shut up. Oh my God. Um, yes. Okay. So, so I think that her insecurities and the way in which she masks them and then like kind of erupts with them is very much true to my own personality, I think. And that's something I have gifted to Jesse's character. Um, I think that she's much more, um, she's confident in a very different way to, to myself. Um, and, uh, but I, I think it's um. I think she is. She's also like often in denial about her, a her like her flaws. Like it's those kind of people who you're like, yeah, I know, I messed up, I'm flawed. But they actually are not naming the right flaws. <laughs> like it's kind of like they're like, oh no no no, those aren't the flaws I'm talking about. These are the ones. And then I think she comes to 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 kind of realize that towards the um, second series. Um, I think um, I think. Again, I'm like, it feels like such an, un it feels like such a natural organic thing for her character because I don't think we ever went in, in with the intention. Honestly, the short answer is that I haven't even thought about it because it's, it's just come so naturally to my own temperament to be outwardly confident and also a contradiction because inside you have deep, deep insecurities. I think it's really fun playing a character like that. I think, uh, sometimes in I guess writing or writing for television characters need to be quite um easy to be like okay this person is this this and this and uh and this kind of person rather than like creating someone who with quite a complex array of um mental flaws <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people like a lot of feedback sometimes from from watching the show they're like Jessie's so annoying she does one thing and then she says one thing and then does another. And I'm like, yeah, like every person you've ever met. Like, I think it's, um, uh, I think it's a good thing to write and see and tell her. And it's a very fun thing to play because, um, because yeah, I love, I love as well, like being able to play a, a especially, especially a, a female character in a rom-com where her insecurities and her, um, her insecurities are, are not the ones that you'd see usually in rom-coms. Like it's not about her body. It's not about being single. It's not about that stuff. It's, it's, it's kind of like, she's got this insecurity of, of, of having her independence compromised a lot of the time. That's what leads to her eruptions. It's kind of, uh, she, she's insecure about, you know, dating someone from a very different world. Not that she thinks he's better than her, but just different. And I think, um, uh i'm i'm glad that she's a character who uh yeah is confident in ways that i think traditionally some rom-com <laughs> leads wouldn't be confident yeah she's also by her own assertion someone who you know doesn't think about the aftermath of actions and choices before she makes them um and so does that also create a really fun space to both write and play into because you get to create the action on the page and in your performance and then you get to look at her processing it you know obviously her staying in england is a huge yeah. example of that but there's so many really kind of minute versions of that throughout the season as well yeah that's a really good point i think it's quite funny and i think it's, it's, it's something I, I probably I have not been aware of until just now because I'm like, it is so much more fun that a character does something and then and then uh, and then like deals with the aftermath of of every of it, um, not having to see like you know 
her not like dark night of the soul kind of looking out the window being like i wonder what i should do about that she 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 does stuff and then after the fact goes hang on why did i do that oh no what 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 and like it's so um it's such a a propelling kind of force for like forward in a, in a story i think where, where, where you don't see characters you know pondering making decisions about stuff also i'm not great at acting that kind of stuff so let's not write that into the script <laughs> i can do panic i can't do pondering um but it is it is so helpful to um and it just leads to like genuinely more comedic scenarios i think when uh someone like you know uh gets into a situation which is you know stupid and um has to deal with the the fallout from that but um yeah, no, it's a great note and I'm going to make sure I, I, I continue to write people who don't think anything through because it's much more fun to play. My, and also a very natural acting state for me is, is panic spirals. Easy. Done. Fine. <laughs> I, one of the other spaces as well, the, the, the going into a second season of a show like this and, and looking at the what happens after they get together that allows for like both more comedic space, but also just a lot more texture between Jesse and Tom with you and Nikesh's performance as well, is what's the rhythms that they kind of like have developed with each other and become second hand, you know, when she's brushing her teeth and walks into the room and is like, oh, you know, do you think I can have a girlfriend? And he's like, I'd rather not. And then they talk about something different. He doesn't even pause to go, why are you bringing this up? What's this actually about? What conversation were you having earlier that led to yeah, asking yeah. this? Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of kind of moments where they come in halfway through a conversation and leave before it ends as well. And mm -hmm. so what are the spaces that you feel like you've really been able to find that have added a lot more richness this season with that? In terms of um, like sort of and in context, their relationship, like where they've got to. Yeah, and just like the rhythms that they know in one another more intimately now. I think, I think, I think the third episode, the party episode is, is quite a yeah. good, um, it's a test. It feels like a test of their relationship in a way. And um, like first fight, at, like first fight at a very busy party as well, I think is a really funny um, <laughs> relationship test because it's sort of like um, trying to like, say face in front of everyone but also have like a having a quiet argument and what, what they end up having is a very loud argument in a glass room but um but yeah putting them in situations like that like um like the party um like the last episode uh which is the the hen do stag night thing um that's a really fun uh, place to, con to sort of see different parts of the rest I don't, I don't know it's it's um God, it's such a good question. And I'm like, I don't even think I've thought of any of that. Like, it's, I'm, I'm a stupid writer. I'm like, wow. Wow. I, I wish, I wish I watched the show you watched. I'm like, it's like oh, brilliant. Cause you can do it without even having to think about it. I, oh no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, um, it's nice though. It's nice because it's a, I think it's a, a definitely a departure from the first series because the first series was such a, will they, won't they kind of coming in and out of each other's, you know, worlds and orbits and stuff. And I think there is a, um, a not formality, but there's like a sort of um, uh, like, they're still like kind of fronting a bit and like, you know, trying to show like this best version of themselves to each other. And it's nice to be able to um, get to a second series where we've seen all of that. We've seen like the kind of meet cute kind of stuff and the awkward, like, you know, do you like me? Do you not like me? They definitely like each other. And so, you know, you see the, kind of like the phone sex like on, on on when she's like trying to have uh you know phone sex with him uh which goes you know not great um and and to and even the end like the kind of what i love it like she's not he's not that surprised that he she jumps into a lake for him because he's like he's come to expect that of her also she rocks up to his housewoman in a tuxedo and he's kind of like all right like <laughs> it's it's such a, a sweet thing for him not to really make a big deal about that i was like why on earth are you dressed like a i don't know like a butler at my, <laughs> my party but it's just yeah it's very sweet that he's a kind of accepting of her um slight eccentricities i don't want to say kook, kooky kookiness <laughs> That'd be mean to she would get mad yeah yeah she'd hit me yeah <laughs> 
and with with a lot of kind of the the comedic elements and moments where there are kind of like arguments or disagreements between the two of them it, it kind of lands so heavily in the comedic space because it feels like that it's you've kind of looked at like what's the funniest exposition of this right now mm. you know okay they're they've kind of like come apart a little bit for a moment and now she's at a magic mic show by herself with a giant banana plush toy you mm. know or they're at the arcade and they're having a, a disagreement about something and she's trying to finish like dance dance revolution game while they're having the conversation mm. um, and so how do you find those exposition moments that really kind of add a different layer and are such a polar opposite to the dialogue that they're having so creates this really kind of great unique myriad of tone both in the dramatic and comedic space at the same time well i love it because they 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 are two characters who are quite avoidant of talking about real stuff and so every argument they have like you know they do have i guess in the first episode they do are but more on the nose about their arguments but like even just like the way um episode four starts with just a massive argument about bananagrams uh which is like <laughs> i love that because it's about something so stupid but it's almost like this is an example of them having a fight about like in, in a very heated argument. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, God, they argue a lot. I'm just going through my mind and I'm going, God, I think about all the times they're arguing. This is, it's not great. It's not great. I think they're very good at arguing though. Because, it's like a chemistry between them though. Some of the time when they're yeah, doing Yeah, they are. It's almost a, the, those two characters are just missing each other and also just misunderstanding each other's insecurities. I think they're like, that's a way in which they're kind, they're kind of slightly incompatible. And that's what leads to the conflict a lot of the time is that neither of them um, accepts that the other one should be insecure because he thinks that she's a great person. And he's like, why are you freaking out all the time? And sh she's like, you're literally famous. There is no reason for you to be insecure. <laughs> And they never talk about that. They never talk about that on the nose, you know? It's always like, I guess, veiled in um, other uh, topics of, of argument. I think, um, but yeah, I think, uh, uh, no. I had such a great point and then now I'm just hearing bagpipes. So I was like- It just got louder. <laughs> the, the Stone Perry Stone Road just got a lot louder. Um, um, but no, what was my point? What was my point? I was going to say something about them arguing and how they're good at arguing. But then I've lost it. Don't worry. Oh my okay. God. I, I, the parade is driving me mental. I'm so sorry. You'll be, you'll be a completely different person by the time we finish this than you were. At I know, end. I know. I'd want to, I just want to, I'm going to go out there and scream at them on the stream being like, I was trying to do a Zoom interview. You ruined it all. <laughs> I mean, with that idea of kind of like the, the arguments and the moments that they do have a friction as a couple, um, was there a consciousness at any point of the fact that it's never really about the external circumstances or things that other people are trying to tell them to, you know, you've got Minnie Driver's character kind of like tries to interfere, but it doesn't really do anything, you know, mm -hmm. below the surface. And so when there are these disagreements and these arguments, it's all about the two of them, you know, like this season, we get to kind of go a lot further into some of Tom's insecurities because he's in a space professionally where that's coming to the foreground. And so that also really heightens the insecurities that he starts to feel in their relationship relationship but it's not about anything that anybody else says or does to the two of them at any point you know I, th I think sometimes it, it uh, uh, I feel like oftentimes it is but I think it's maybe in the writing of those of those arguments I think again like us trying to make these arguments feel real I feel like arguments you would have in a relationship where I think you know in other contexts maybe in an, uh, another show you'd you'd kind of have someone being like yeah and your agent just came in here and said that that she wanted me to sign an NDA. So that's why I'm angry. And it's like, it's like, obviously that's the reason why she's spinning out. Like at the, the like in the end of episode three, it's the fact that, you know, she's met all these people that uh, uh, have made her feel uncomfortable, all that stuff. And it's, I guess it's more about maybe taking those external things and doing what any person does, which is, you know, process them and then, uh, and then sort of erupt <laughs> with sort of um, uh, an argument about something else. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I think that that feels more real to me. It feels more real to us as writers is that, yeah, I've never had an argument where I'm kind of, I, I don't know, I'm that specific about plot points. <laughs> I don't think you have, I don't think you reference plot points in arguments in real life. Do you know what I mean? So I think, um, 
uh, uh, that's 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 why they feel quite quite real. I mean, like you know that again, like that banana grams ar- argument is like clearly about slightly about something else, probably <laughs> not banana grams, but not about banana. We grams. never find out. We never find out. <laughs> I also separately wanted to ask you about, you know, how some of your previous experience has kind of informed the way that you work on this show, the way that you created this show, and in particular, Funny Girls, which was a show in New Zealand that you co-created and and starred in and and wrote on, because it seems like that must be a really rich place to get to kind of explore your voice as a creative in a lot of different facets, because you're trying lots of different styles all within the same format. And so has that been a really pivotal kind of learning ground for you? And are there ways that that influences the Way that you now work on Starstruck and create and write this show. Yeah, I mean, it means that I can work fast because we made that show for twenty dollars and um, and like three sketches in one day. Um, I uh, well, I wrote, I wrote Funny Girls with with Alice Sned and, and Nick Sampson, who who both write on the second series with me. Um, and so we all came up at the same time, writing on the same show. So we started kind of went from comedy to working on sort of like entertainment shows like you know fronted by two two dudes doing you know studio stuff and then kind of you know sketches and stuff which is kind of a topical topical comedy show that we that was like on every friday night then funny girls felt like a, a bit of a spin-off from that um and and i was yeah really young when i started i was like 22 maybe 23 when i did that show and it was i think writing sketch comedy and writing for like other people um, was the most amazing training, um, I think, and a really like kind of broad kind of uh, tr- a training ground, I think, for writing. I always wanted to write. I always wrote, you know, as, as a teenager, and it was always, you know, something I wanted to do and write particularly, you know, scripted stuff. But that taught you how to like tell, tell a story very quickly. It taught you about telling it in the shortest possible amount of time because a sketch could only be anything over five or six pages was far too long. Um, it taught me a lot about working in different genre, as you say, like, you know, being able to sort of put on different like hats and, and sort of, you know, write in a completely different genre um, uh, um, from, from sketch to, to sketch. And it also taught me, the biggest thing it taught me was just collaboration with other people and other writers, like um, not being precious about a script. Like we, we write, it was real. It was like, kind of like a, it was like, uh, uh, I wouldn't say it was, it was, it was just a lot of young writers who were like kind of forced to write a lot for like not much money and like produce a lot of content. And, um, and I wouldn't go back to doing it, but, but we were constantly like, you know, writing alts for link scripts or writing sketches. And then like someone would write one draft of a sketch and then give it to someone else and they'd do a pass and then give it to some, another person, they'd do a pass and they'd do a notes pass. And I mean that you can never be, never be like hurt when someone just changed your script. And, um, and in writing a show like this with two people who came from that background as well, um, meant that, um, it's so amazing to work with writers who um, are on the same page as, the, as you and can collaborate without being dicks because um, honestly, it's worth so much. And that's why I work with the same people all the time when I'm writing. Yeah. I love that. Well, you know, congratulations on everything with the second season. Whenever you watch the first season of something and it feels so perfect and you fall in love with it, always kind of creates a little bit of nerves kind of going into the second season, but it's absolutely- Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the second season's absolutely raised the bar on the show even more and it's so great. So thank you so much, Rose, really appreciate it. And um, oh, enjoy, nice enjoy the Patrick's Day Parade outside your window. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna have they're gonna have hell to pay. I'm, I'm telling you that. Or maybe I'll just join it. I don't know, maybe I'll be swept up in the sort of, what I mean of it. <laughs>